Welcome back guys, I'm Nate with the King of Random. Today we're going to be showing you how to take the molds we made in a previous video and use them to cast fiberglass. So far we showed you how to take rigid insulation foam and carve that into the shape of your choice. I chose shells from Mario Kart because that game's always been a favorite of mine, and previously I've made giant Mario Kart shells for a video for Devin Supertramp. After carving our shells, we made a two-part mold using silicone rubber and plaster. At this point, the mold is ready and it's time to use fiberglass to make our shells permanent. We'll use fiberglass cloth and resin to cast the two halves of the shell separately and then glue them together with more fiberglass. After cleaning up our casting, we'll paint it and we'll have a complete shell. Fiberglass resin smells really strongly and it's not very good to breathe it in, so we're going to take our shells outside and do our casting there. Fiberglass has three parts. First, there's a resin and a catalytic activator. This is what makes this liquid turn into hard plastic. The third part is the fiberglass itself. As the name suggests, this is a cloth that is actually made out of glass. Extremely thin strands of glass are woven together into a sheet. So first thing, let's cut our fiberglass cloth into small manageable pieces. It's crazy that this stuff is made of glass, but you can still cut it with scissors. It's important to note that while this stuff acts like cloth, the individual cut or broken strands of glass can be very irritating, so it's important to always wear gloves while you're handling it. Now our fiberglass is all cut up and prepped, let's mix up some resin. Follow the instructions on the can for the ratios of the hardener to the resin. Now using a disposable brush, let's spread an even layer of the resin with the catalyst mixed into it along the inside of our mold. Once your mold is coated in resin, begin applying the fiberglass cloth. Press it into place and dab more resin on top of it. You may find that this job is easier with two people, one person applying the cloth and another person applying the resin. It's better to have the fiberglass overlap a little bit than for there to be gaps. If you're running low on resin, just mix up another small batch. It's better to do several small batches instead of one big batch because it's easier to control and less likely to catalyze in your cup. Applying the resin on top of the fiberglass is almost more of a pressing motion than a brushing motion. It really helps drive the resin down into the fibers and make everything stick to the silicone below. Try to minimize air pockets where the fiberglass pulls away from the mold. If you see the fiberglass pulling away, just press it back down in with your brush. We now have a thin layer of fiberglass covering the entire inside of this mold. So let's let this fiberglass cure for a few minutes while we work on our other shell, then we'll come back and add a second layer. All right. We now have a first layer of fiberglass in both sides of our mold, so let's repeat the process and add a second layer. So it turns out the cups that I have been using are made of polystyrene, which means that as the resin catalyzes, it's actually going to start melting through them, not only from the heat, but also because it just chemically dissolves them a little bit. Now I've got two layers of fiberglass on each side of the shell. Once the fiberglass has cured and hardened, I'll peel them out of the mold. Here we go, we now have two layers of fiberglass cast in both sides of our mold. The fiberglass has cured, it's rigid now, so it's time to peel what we have cast out of our mold. With two layers, the fiberglass should be fairly strong, but still slightly flexible, which will help us demold. First step is to remove the mold jacket. Now we peel off the silicone. We have a fiberglass casting of a turtle shell. Look at that, that turned out great. A few air bubbles in a couple spots. We can patch those up. Here 
There you go, there's the top half. We have the two halves of our shell. What we're gonna do is line them up and use a strip of fiberglass all the way around to secure them together. Before we attach the two sides together, let's trim the excess fiberglass that was sticking up over the edge of the mold. This application of the fiberglass is basically the same as what we did before inside the mold. We'll put a thin layer of the resin on, then attach the fiberglass cloth to that, and then use a thicker layer of resin to glue it all down. There you have it, the two sides are now glued together with a layer of fiberglass and as soon as that's cured, all we have to do is clean it up and paint it and our shell will be complete. The fiberglass gluing the two sides together has now cured, so all that's left is to take a rotary tool and grind down any sharp edges that may have been left by the fiberglass. After that, it'll be ready to paint. All the sharp points have now been taken down, so let's add some color. I've painted a base coat of white over the whole shell, and now I'm going to mask off the part that I want to stay white, which is the ridge around the middle, while I add the other colors to the top and bottom of the shell. Even if you're wearing gloves, it's probably not a good idea to hold stuff while you're spray painting it. You can see that the splatter has just gotten all over my arm. That's a pain to get off. It's all painted up, let's peel off the tape. We could say that this is good, but I want to add a few more details using colored ink in an airbrush. Oh, my airbrush is running away. There you have it, those are the exact same techniques that I used to make Devin Super Tramp's giant Mario Kart shells, and you can use these same techniques to make whatever kind of project you want to. To recap what we did today, we took our silicone molds and we laid fiberglass resin and fiberglass cloth down inside of them. Once that fiberglass was cured, we took the two pieces out of their respective molds and put them together. We then used some more fiberglass as a sort of belt that went around the center ridge of the shell to glue it all together. After using a rotary tool to clean up any sharp edges or excess fiberglass, we used spray paint and an airbrush to bring some colorful life to our project. And this thing is solid. You could probably stand on this. I'm not gonna try just in case it would crack, but like, it's rigid, it is solid, it is firm. This is something that will last for a long time, and it looks great no matter what you wanna do with it. Now the mold for these shells is not a single use item. We still have the molds and we can use them again as many times as we want. They're very durable, they'll last a long time. And in fact, a future project that I want to try is using a two-part foam to cast another one of these shells in this same mold. And then I'll have what's basically a Nerf ball in the shape of a Mario Kart shell. How fun would that be? Thanks for joining us for this project and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then. I wonder if you could just make your own hard hats that look like turtle shells. Need some padding. It's, uh, it sits a little low on my head, honestly. I like having it next to my head because that show, like, if it's out here, you can't tell how big it really is, but this size. It's just, it's basically permanent marker ink. Uh, not Sharpie brand, but yeah, it's just black ink, really. It's like a mama shell and a baby shell. Hey guys, I know there are so many great videos and great YouTubers out there that you could be watching instead of the King of Random, so I just want to say how grateful I am that you choose to watch us. We're constantly doing everything in our power to bring you the best content we can make, so truly, just wanted to say thanks.